This is TV Pilot Boot Camp. This is our first week of the six-week course. This is going to get you a complete TV, the first draft of a completed TV pilot by the end. My name is Connor, and I'm the instructor at Script Camp of all our boot camp classes. And, um, uh, excuse me, all our boot camp classes so far, we actually have recently been adding new ones, such as playwriting with Morgan Smalley. And we'll be adding um, more types of classes as we go on as well. So make sure to check our website, which is scriptcamp.net. And uh, you can find all the latest updates. Here's a couple slides just about troubleshooting audio in case you have any issues with your Discord connection. Just go to these, or like rewind the stream to these spots. And um, you can just uh, have some tips for things you might be able to fix. All right, so what's Script Camp? We are a screenwriting community that's focused on helping take you get your concept from idea to first draft to more polished script. We have lots of free classes and uh, events and workshops. We have some paid classes as well, um, boot camps and writers labs. So this is a little about me, who I think uh, a lot of the, if you've taken a class with us before, you know all about me already, but just the quick overview is that I have been a rep and working screenwriter since 2017, when I placed in the top 10 of the Launchpad contest and got signed off of that. Since then, have placed in Nickel Quarterfinal, Nickel Semifinal, have uh, wrote an episode of Creep Show back in 2019, have been featured on a few lists, which you can see here, and I have a thriller script set up at a production company in town. I, uh, yep, I'm the I, I'm the creator of Script Camp, and co-founder is Nacho, who is uh, also running many classes and events on our server. What is this boot camp? We go from idea to first draft of a new pilot using this step-by-step -step practical method. These two-hour weekly classes, it's um, different timelines for the different types of writing that we do here. So eight weeks for the feature, six weeks for TV, four weeks for the rewrites. Here's an overview of the whole course. So today we will be, um, or this is a, 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 as you can see, all the dates are a week ahead because this is like the free intro class. But week one is about the concept and logline where we will finalize the logline and fill out the sketchbook. So today is gonna be like an overview of everything and just the, some of the, excuse me, some of the basics on um, how to get a logline down and refine it as much as possible, just making sure that the idea that you're working with is as solid as possible. We then will go into week two, which is structure and broad strokes, where we will work on what we call the story beat summary, which is just like a list of ordered events of the whole story um, with the proper you know, structural beats that are um, nailed in place so that we know where your act breaks are going to be, we know your midpoint is going to be, and you just have the, the sort of foundations of the story put into place. The week three is on scene cards, which is the more detailed version of that synopsis, and it's going to be a full paragraph for every single scene in the entire script, and then we actually start writing at week four. So the first three weeks are just pre-writing, just making sure that you know what's supposed to happen on every single page before you begin. This is part of that very fastidious, methodical process that we use here just to make sure that we are fully planning everything before we even write a single page. So week four is first act, week five, second act, week six, third act. So you'll be having to write 10 to 20 pages a week once we get to that stage in order to keep up in the milestones of the class. There's no grades and there's no requirement to actually uh, like be uh, on exact track with the class. You don't have to meet all those milestones exactly. Um, and hopefully if you don't finish within the class, at least we put you on the road and given you a push in the right direction so that you can finish on your own within you know a few weeks after that. Uh, pilot script finished by July 3rd. So uh, if we yeah stick with the course in just, uh, yes, yeah, six, what is it, seven weeks from now, I guess, uh, your pilot script will be totally done. So uh, make sure to also submit your script for table reads if you want to. It's uh, Sunday, May 15th at 2 p.m. Everybody can submit five-page shorts or a five-page excerpt from a longer thing. You can submit a feature, uh, which is going to be 125, up to 125 pages, or a pilot up to 80 pages, but you have to earn the table reader role for that. Nacho, can you explain a little more? Sure, yeah. So um, we have what is called script coins. So basically, every time you give people feedback, you participate in activities, or if you just participate in the in the table reads and like read apart, or, you know, just generally helping other people in the community, you get some coins. And then um, if you spend 100 script coins, you can do a complete a table read of your complete feature up to 125 pages, or any TV pilot up to 80 pages. Uh, and uh, also, if you are an unlimited member, also you get some uh, uh, free coins over here. There you go. So yeah, we use this uh, silly little Chuck E. Cheese currency. Where do we have the, where's the thing on script coins? Do we have a slide on that? 
maybe not at the beginning of this one. But um, yeah, type in dollar sign store into any chat channel. And you can see more about how coins work and what they are. It's just kind of a fun thing to keep everyone participating. All you have to, I mean, you don't have to pay money to get them or anything. You're just participating and giving feedback and, you know, <clears throat> engaging in the server will give you coins that you can use to buy little merchandise items or table reads or even membership in different classes. Um, deadline for that is May 13th. So how to join the boot camp. Uh, remember, this is a free public intro class, so you don't have to do anything right now before the end of this class. But um, before the next one, you should either buy the class on its own, scriptcamp.net slash classes, or you can start your free membership, uh, sorry, the free trial for your membership at scriptcamp.net slash membership, which is going to give you two weeks of unlimited, that's 70 hours of classes a month, private Discord channels, video library recordings of all of our classes, $100 off consultations or proofreads, every event, every boot camp, every lab, so unlimited is probably going to be your best um, value. If you want to just get the $5 a month basic, you can still access eight classes a month and access the video library and private Discord channels, but it won't include the lab or boot camps. And then here's just a little more on consultations and coverage, which, again, you get $100 off if you are a member, so big value there. Um, feel free to review that on your own. I won't go over all of these, but we offer proofreads, coverage, and consultations. All right, so um, let's just open up the discussion a little bit, and the way the best way to do this will be um, to keep your mics muted for the roommate, for the uh, majority of class. But then when we get to a discussion slide, I'll say like, you know, feel free to unmute and weigh in. You can use the chat as well on the left-hand side of your Discord window, just the text alone. It's called TV Pilot Bootcamp, the chat channel. So you can um, type in there, or you can unmute. But tell us about yourself. What are your goals as a writer? Have you written a TV pilot before? What kind of show are you hoping to write, or what are you hoping to learn? Um, anyone, feel free to weigh in. Go ahead. Um, okay, can I, can I go first? Go then? ahead. Okay, um, all right, my name is Simmer, or Young Scrimp is my username. Um, I really, very recently got into screenwriting. Um, I used to do a lot of... I did a lot of comic writing. Um, I'm still an amateur, I, or at least I consider myself so. And uh, but I got into screenwriting recently, and I wrote, I wrote a short and uh, two pilots so far. But I don't think either of them are are that good. So I I'm trying. I hope to improve my craft. So okay. To speak. Great. So this is your. This will be your third pilot. Uh yeah, but my first like I I kind of like winged it. I I didn't really plan it out or anything. So. So it'll be like my first, like, very structured kind of... I see. Thing. Yeah. Th I think a lot of people start that way where they're just like, I just want to try this, but I don't actually know exactly what to do. And that's totally fine. Yeah. I mean, I, that's what I, I started in high school. Just like, I don't know, I'm going to write a historical detective series. And I got like eight pages in. And I was like, oh, wait, you have to actually know what the mystery is, don't you? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, it turns out you do now have to know what the mystery is to write a mystery show. And you have to know, you know, like you have to, the more you can get in place early on, and the more structure that you can, like, knock out in your first couple weeks of working on it, the less you have to worry about that stuff when you're in the middle of it. And that can just be, like, it's it's one of the biggest problems when people just try to wing it that they end up getting stuck. Because they're like, well, I don't know what to do now. I have to totally start over. Um, so, yeah, nailing that structure and understanding structure is going to be one of the biggest takeaways from courses like this. Even if you don't love the method that we use, you can at least, like, modify it or, like, change it up a little bit to suit your process better. And just take that going forward, like, even if you, even once you leave the camp or don't do the camp anymore, at least you'll have some foundation for how to just plan and organize and, um, like, assemble an overview for a pilot before you start. So, thanks for that. Um, anyone else want to weigh in? What are your goals? What have you written before? What are you hoping to work on or improve on? Uh, I don't mind popping in and uh, no one else will. Go ahead. So uh, thanks for hosting this, Connor. It's good to meet you. Um, I uh, actually just finished my first major project about a month and a half ago. And to be honest, I, I'm I'm just a little scared with this void of creative energy that's left in my, that's, you know, in my life now. I didn't realize how much of my spare time I was dedicating towards this, this project, which was kind of like a, an animated feature film. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I, think I just need to kind of get some structure uh, back to writing and treat it less like a hobby and more like a, you know, like a dedicated 
you know, I, I, I guess I'm trying to hope to bridge the uh, the gulf between hobby and job with screenwriting. Right. You have to kind of treat it like this part time job that you don't get paid for it and that uh, you have to just uh, keep clocking in at day after day. Um, exactly. It's, oh. it's tough. Uh, yeah. Um, and, you know, they say some people say you have to treat if you want it to be your job, you have to treat it like a job. And to some extent, that is true. I mean, just I, I would say just set like weekly goals for yourself at the very least. Like when I'm doing a script, I'll be like, okay, it's got to be 20 pages a week. Or when I'm writing prose, I'll be like 10,000 words a week. Um, and it doesn't matter exactly how you split that up. And if it turns out that's like more than you can do, then just tone it down. But the more, more important thing is just to be consistent and to keep your momentum up, even if that momentum is a little like, like it's better to have consistent slower momentum than like to write in sprints and bursts and, to, and if it doesn't result in you finishing things consistently. So yeah, um, that's all great. And um, um, if you've written a feature script before, then you'll have a little bit of foundation in this. You'll realize there are some pretty big differences, um, of course, between features and TV. Um, but we'll at least you'll you'll have that uh, if you, if you've written a full thing and finished it, then that's a huge first step. So if this is anyone's first script, that's also okay. But um, the more that you just write and execute and finish things, the more that you will build up the muscles that just allow you to do this as many times as you need. Thanks, Harlan. Thank you. Uh, Monica says, I have two TV pilots, a 45-minute family drama about a man who starts a cult, and a 30-minute kid sci-fi adventure. I've been working at learning how to write screenplays for seven years. I think I'm ready to take the next level. Current writing project is a feature, but I thought I'd lurk here and learn what I can. All right. Yep, that's totally fine. You can always just hang out and see what we're all about here and see how the program works and um, listen to some other people's ideas and see what we'll be doing. Um, we have these these programs cycle out, so every um, six weeks there's a new pilot boot camp, every eight weeks there's a new feature boot camp, every four weeks there's a new rewrite, um, and uh, playwriting is not cycling so far, but um, we might at some point in the future. But if you have access to our, uh, if you're a member, you can look at the videos of all of those classes. Um, so yeah, you can feel free to just browse or just visit a class and just see what we do there as well. Mel Max says, new writer aiming for Hallmark-style TV movie. Okay, sure. Uh, TV movie would not exactly be a pilot. That would be more like a, just a shorter feature. Um, so maybe consider going to our feature class if you want to see like more about how those work. But um, at, yeah, you might still gain some good insight and information from this class too. Anyone else want to weigh in? All right, that's okay. Um, we have a few more folks in the chat, and we might get more joining as the class goes on. So if you're watching on one of our various streams on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, something like that, you can come join us on Discord. Just download Discord. ScriptCamp.net will give you the join link, um, and you can uh, hop in and participate, <coughs> unless you're a troll, in which case uh, maybe don't do it. Or uh, Well, that'll that'll encourage them to do it. So I'll say if you're a troll, sure, come on by. We don't care. Um, but then... Uh, I don't know if reverse psychology will work either. So just, um, I've said too much. But come on by, and uh, don't be a troll or we'll have to ban you. Uh, will this pilot be good? Uh, probably not. That's okay. Um, you have to just move beyond the idea that any individual script has to be good. And, and to that end, we encourage you to not choose your lifelong passion projects for a, a boot camp course or something that's going to, anything that's going to require a vast amount of research. This is mostly just to kind of build those muscles that are going to make you a better writer, and you have to become a sort of generator of unlimited ideas. Uh, every project you finish will have to go through many changes once, even like in the best case scenario, it will be bought and rewritten, and there will be many other cooks in the kitchen, and you just can't rely on any single one project to be your golden goose or whatever. So um, you just have to uh, get used to this idea that even really good pilots will probably just be writing samples that might help you find management or get you staffing meetings, which can maybe, if you nail those meetings, get you staffed, and then you'll have to work for years on staff to work your way up to you know, the ranks of writing producers. And eventually one day with some mentoring help and luck might be considered to run your own show after many, many years of doing this. Um, so uh, don't, don't expect any one script is going to get made or is gonna get you money or is gonna get you any one result. You should look at every script as, you know, you're doing reps with the dumbbell, 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 or <clears throat> whatever. You're doing push-ups at the gym. It's not like you're digging for gold and you're going to find some nugget that's going to make you rich. Um, you have to do a million reps before you can w enter the Olympics or something like that. 
So showrunners and producers are looking at your pilot and writing as a writing sample mostly to see your ability to craft these original storylines and characters and to weave everything together to create a product that is entertaining and makes sense and coheres as a whole and checks all the boxes it's sort of supposed to check. So remember, don't don't rely on too much on any one idea. Your objective is to become a, a writer who is a generator of unlimited ideas and to develop those skills necessary to execute those ideas consistently on a quick time frame and with this high level of quality. So the script is not supposed to give you a, this course is not intended to end up, to, to make you end up with a great script, whatever that is, or a script that will go anywhere or get you anything. This is about building the skills to become a TV writer. So not that really the path to become a director. Um, writing does not really branch directly to directing in TV. If you want to write a show to be in as an actor, perhaps that could, like writer creator is a thing in TV nowadays with shows like, you know, Fleabag or Atlanta or things like that. So that is a valuable path if you are a fantastic leading person for the show. But if this is just your dream thing that you've been working on for many years, it might just not be the right one for the boot camp course. Um, this is work. This takes a long time and no one starts out good at this. So why do you want to write a pilot? Here's some possible answers to practice getting really good at writing pilots or to work up to the point where you can either get into a, get a writer's assistant job and start placing highly in contests and fellowships. Those are some good reasons there. Um, if you want to write one pilot because you want to get the show made, then again, not exactly a feasible way forward uh, for most of the time. 99.9% .9 of pilots that are ever written, excuse me, I have the hiccups, are, are never going to get made. So um, a bricklayer making a road doesn't care too much whether any individual brick is a masterpiece or is even particularly great. You just have to move on to the next brick. All right, so what are some of our shows that we've been watching recently? Favorite shows of all time and favorite pilots in particular? Um, I'll start recently. I, I wa I've watched all of Severance on Apple TV, which is just stunningly good. A little bit like you might say towards the middle, you're like, where is this going? This is a little bit slow. But by the end, it really picks back up. And the finale is just one of the best finales I've ever seen that weaves together all of the, like pretty much all of the plot threads that we've been balancing so far, um, twists them into this amazing shape, and then uh, like just leaves you with a few questions, but answers some other things. And, and just it's amazing fireworks to watch the finale of that show happen. It's so edge of your seat tense the entire time. And everything leading up to it is just like, you, you come to realize why everything was where it was. So the finale really nailed that show for me. The, the pilot's quite good too, though, so you should watch that um, if you're into like sci-fi stuff. Um, and I watched Tokyo Vice on HBO, which was, I, it started like as a 3 out of 5 for me, or up maybe 3.5 out of 5, just because the main character struck me as a little flat, um, with not a whole lot going on. He's sort of like, I want to fight crime because I want to fight crime. And that was pretty much all that it seemed there was going on with him. But as the show broadened out its scope to be more about the other characters, especially the... It's it's mostly a Yakuza drama. Like, it's it's 90% in Japanese. Um, it's uh, it, it follows, like, five or six different sort of characters around the world of, like, late 90s Tokyo crime world. Um, and uh, it's just ended up being great. Like, it bumped up to a 4 out of 5 to me by the end. I, I really started liking the other characters more than the protagonist. Um, which happens a lot with big ensemble shows, I find at least, because the protagonist is like a way into the world. But then you start liking everything else a little more. So um, that actually ended up working for me, even as the protagonist sort of got sidelined a little bit as it went on. Um, I sort of became more engaged in everyone else's stories. And by the finale, I was really into it. So I hope to see more of that. And I hope that gets renewed for season two. So what have you guys been watching? What have you been liking and why? Harlan says, in the last five years, my favorite pilot was you with Penn Badgley. Uh, that is, that's on Netflix, I believe, right? That's the sort of like st uh, stalker guy show. And overall, a big fan of pilots from Mad Men, Lost, and The Americans. Um, yeah, great shows there. Um, and really good pilots all, all around. It's hard to have a great show if you don't have a good pilot. But then again, most pilots are not really representative of the show. And so like they're usually going to be one of the weaker episodes just due to the nature of how TV works. Um, like often they have to shoot a pilot sometimes a long time before they get ordered to series so they can't get all the actors that they wanted or that they had in the pilot or they have to change or reshoot certain things or like adjust things so that especially with cartoons which usually have like the pilot is kind of uh, like a sample version of what the show could be and ends up being way different. Um, so, uh, yeah, pilots are often not going to be the highlight of a show, but the best thing that we can do is just get good at writing them as, as good as you can at writing them because they're the best way to sort of get staffing and, and meetings and the best way to get going as a TV writer nowadays. 
Um, anyone else? Um, I, I really like the show. Um, I, I watched it twice now, uh, Daredevil. Um, okay, great. I found it, um, well, I, I really like the action scenes, uh, but I also really like the, um, the big, like, mystery crime like noir noir aspect as well and the main character like his struggle like um to, like not give in to like this um it's kind of cliche but i i don't know i, I really liked it i also really like the acting um another show that i like is uh mr robot um i thought the pilot was very interesting because it was it's very weird and it uses i think it's the first time i watched a show that used voiceover Mm -hmm. uh, but it's very effective, and it um, kind of it, it was a very interesting way to to look into the main character's mind, even if he's like an unreliable narrator. Or, yeah, or I like I that. love voiceover, and um, it's a great way, like you said, to explore the interiority of characters that otherwise you would have a hard time fully understanding, or you'd have a hard time mm -hmm. engaging with as much because you're like, why are they doing what they're doing? Um, so yeah, that show uses it really well, and he gets even more unreliable as it goes on. It's pretty cool. There's some bizarre episodes of that. that that's a great show. Uh, Monica says, I've been watching the old Gundam series from 1979. It's good and not good. Interesting as a historical artifact, especially given that anime has become a whole trope that simply didn't exist in 1979. Um, let me bring up the chat here. Whoop. Um, yeah, I'm not an I'm not really an anime person myself. I don't watch any uh, shows, or and I haven't really liked any anime that I've seen, except for like brief, occasional like episodes of things now and again. Um, so uh, if you want to write that sort of thing for the for the class, that's totally fine. Um, I won't be able to help as much with just the genre conventions. Um, some people do just want to write that sort of stuff though, and that's that's totally cool. Um, my specialty, if you want to know what I really know the most about, I'm into horror and thriller, so if anybody's writing that sort of stuff, that is where my home is, and I'll be able to, you know, give you the best assistance possible with that. Um, action is my sort of, uh, other big thing, so yeah, horror, thriller, and action are always going to be my, um, preference, but, uh, you can write whatever you want for the course. I will have some ground rules on things that you might consider, um, choosing. So Bren DeLorean says, you already mentioned my favorite from recent watching, which is Severance. Such a great first season. Every episode so tight and nothing seemed unnecessary. So much intrigue, leaving you wanting more. So I'll reinforce your recommendation to watch. Yes, uh, check it out. It's it's awesome. <laughs> and uh, once you've watched the finale also, go back and watch the first couple episodes because you'll just be like, oh, that's what that meant. Oh, that's why they did that. It's, it's definitely, it holds up on the rewatch for, you get the extra value of seeing how everything comes together there. All right, thanks for weighing in, folks. Uh, so let's look at the overview for today. So we'll look at ground rules and the types of things that you should choose for the class so you don't have to have your um, choice nailed down right now for what you want to write for the course. But you should ha start be thinking of ideas and be writing a couple things down and ideally can narrow it down to two or three different options at the most. Um, and by next week, you're going to want to finish your finish nailing down the log line and, the, and your choice by the end of that class. So we'll talk about what spec means and how it applies to TV writing We'll look at TV writing basics, time slot and format and genre, then the idea of premise versus status quo, which are just sort of the two different narrative styles of how TV works. It's either going to be the shows that reset continuity every episode and you don't have to worry about how they, they connect with one another, or the opposite, which is there is a longer story that needs to be sort of explored chapter by chapter. And then we'll look at log lines, which are going to be the one sentence expression of a premise for both the series and the pilot. So you need two separate log lines to write a TV show. We're not going to go into show Bible, so you don't need to do that. And um, it's really only those are important for, I guess, pitching purposes or when you get pretty far in the TV writing process slash career, um, then people might start asking for those. But if you're just learning how to write pilots, you do not need to write show Bibles. Do not even bother. Um, so here's some ground rules. One, no true stories, anthology, soaps, rewrites or adaptations. Uh, don't do time travel. Just trust me. I every time somebody I say this and someone takes it as a challenge and is like, well, I'm going to do time travel. And we've never seen someone be able to finish that script. Never has a, a time travel script been finished in a script camp ever. Just don't do it. Just don't. You'll, you'll get confused. You'll get um, your different methods of time streams mixed up. You'll find uh, paradoxes and uh, like continuity errors and all these things that are just going to like n 
screw you up enough that you're not going to be able to finish it in six weeks. It's only six weeks to write a whole show, so you want to pick something that you can reasonably finish in that amount of time without adding extra stress for yourself. So you don't want to pick something that's going to require a lot of research, like a true story or anything that requires a certain um, adherence to historicity or reality. Some, if it's like based on your life and you're going to want to get every single thing just right, then that might inhibit you from finishing in the time frame that we want to do here. So um, just don't pick something that's going to require weeks and weeks and weeks of research and any kind of uh, like mm, loyalty to one set of events, such as it really happened or it's an adaptation of a book I like. Or it's a fan fiction script based on, you know, a video game or a anime or something that I've seen before that I want to get just right. Um, pick something new and original and maybe pick a crazier, wackier idea that you think would never normally get made or nobody would ever make a show like that. But you always kind of thought it would be cool to see. This is, again, just like practice. You're practicing writing pilots. You're not going to end up with something that's going to change your life or change your career probably. But you just need to start writing things and finishing things and moving on to the next thing. So to that end, get used to sharing the uh, sharing your work with me and with your fellow students and everyone, even at the early stages. I know it can be difficult to hear big notes at early stages, but it's TV writing and you have to collaborate with people to do this. And if you want to be on a staff, you have to even work with your very early versions of ideas or you may throw out just like, here's a bad version of this idea first um, and get used to hearing things be shot down or getting notes that says that doesn't work for whatever reason. And you need to be able to take those things gracefully and um, you know, uh, with, with kindness and with constructive criticism and all these things. And you need to be able to provide those things as well. So screenwriting is an extremely social job. TV writing is an extraordinarily social job. So you're not gonna be getting staffed on TV shows unless you are very pleasant to work with, extremely talented, or um, some combination of those, probably. You have to be at least one or the other. Um, and ideally, both. You should probably be both. Um, so uh, yeah, don't, don't worry about if your ideas aren't perfect or aren't totally done, or um, you are worried that you're gonna, you, no one's gonna tell you you're bad at this stop. Uh, so just um, share, share everything you've got. You've got to lay it out on the table. No one's going to take anything from you. No one's going to steal anything or insult you or anything like that. So um, just get used to these social aspects of the job that are really, really integral to how this works. Um, if you're going to continue to be in the boot camp, you must use a real name or anything that is a real name instead of a username. You don't have to for this class, but if you're going to come to the next ones in the following classes, then you should. All right, here's some TV writing basics. In the US, shows are written by staffs most of the time. That consists of a staff writer I'm sorry, that consists of a few staff writers that are overseen by a hierarchy of writing producers, all of whom are overseen by the showrunner, who is the sort of, you know, head honcho. The showrunner is the head of both writing and production and the heart and soul of the entire show. They are, and the brain, they are the show. The number of staff writers can vary anywhere from like two to three, all the way up to 15 or so for big sketch, late night, and things like that. Comedy rooms are usually much larger than drama rooms. Let's look at how do you actually get staffed. One track is by being in LA. You have to physically be in LA for the most part to do this um, and spend years working your way through the assistant <coughs> progression track. I won't be able to help too much with this, though we have occasional guests that will be able to answer more questions about that. Um, but you have to go from basically office PA to writer's PA to writer's assistant to showrunner's assistant, then potentially can be considered for staffing. That's how it normally goes. There's all kinds of exceptions and little shortcuts within that um, that you might be able to learn more about from people who've actually done it. But basically you spend a long time paying your dues and uh, work, you know, getting people coffee and uh, taking notes. And then you will move to the place where you are actually keeping notes in the writer's room of like helping keep them organized toward their, on their whiteboard for like how long, how, um, uh, for how episodes are going to break in the season and like how the plots are going and all the, like organizing and collating all of their ideas. And then once you do that enough, then they might give you an episode to write. And if it really works, they might put you on staff. But um, that all takes a long time and uh, requires you to be an assistant for many years. Um, the other track is just get obscenely good at writing pilots on your own, as well as other stuff like plays and books and stand up and um, sketches and web shows and features, anything else just to build out your portfolio and stand out and get attention. <clears throat> but then once you actually are able to nail any meetings, um, probably through contest fellowships or networking, just accolades plus networking is mostly going to be the way to get reads at that point. Um, you have to really nail those meetings and be a phenomenal writer. So um, once you do that, you can potentially get a manager who's then going to submit your portfolio during staffing season. Then you have to nail those meetings and really impress the showrunner and seem like a really pleasant, intelligent, quick person to work with who's done their work, or, you know, sorry, done their research. 
um, and who's really good at what they do, and then you can potentially be staffed that way. So, uh, it's not easy to be a TV writer. Uh, there's more sort of stuff, more shows being bought and made than ever, with all the different streaming platforms and, and uh, all the different ways to watch stuff now, and all the hunger for original content, but the competition is also higher than ever. With You know, there's millions of people that want to do this, there's a couple hundred slots for it, um, it's a it's a tough it's a tough race and a tough game to be in. Uh, TV writing basics. So joining a TV staff means being in a room with people for twelve plus hours a day for several months. So you need to be good in a room, like I've mentioned, which means good social skills, extroverted, rece- good at receiving feedback gracefully and giving notes and assessing what problems are in other people's ideas and riffing off other people and collaborating well, um, being nice and presentable with a thick skin. And you live in LA, and all these things should be in place before um, you consider joining a staff. Uh, this is this is not the kind of thing that you're just uh, reclusively hiding in your house and writing on your own. You're writing and talking and discussing and uh, assessing problems and and um, reworking things and always just uh, working over other people's ideas a lot in the early stages. Um, if you want to just write on your own in the safety and comfort of your own house, probably you should be writing books or web comics on your own. So, what is a spec? It's a weird term that actually refers to several separate things in different contexts. Spec stands for speculative, but in features, a speculative script is one that you have written on your own that was not commissioned by anyone. So this is just an original movie that you've written for the purpose of getting made or getting new reads or perhaps, uh, you know, getting uh, submitting as a sample for something. Um, it was commissioned by no one, though. Um, so, in a TV, a spec episode refers to, like, a fan fiction episode of an existing show, basically. So that's a show that's usually on the air. It's critically well-liked, and, or a long-running, more elemental one, like The Simpsons or Law & Order or something. Or an up-and-coming show, usually, in its second to fourth season. These are not needed as much nowadays. You only really need them to enter fellowships and for practice writing in someone else's voice. I guess it can be useful for that. Excuse me. <coughs> Um, but uh, more often than not, you'll be writing pilots, otherwise known as spec pilots, but usually just called pilots. Um, these are pro- an original first episode of a theoretical series that does not exist and probably never will, and you use this as a writing sample to get reads, meetings, and to enter contests. Um, so, yeah, we're working on... I, I know spec is a confusing term um, that is just bizarre in its versatility a little bit, but... Um, we're, for the purposes of this class, we're going to be writing spec pilots, meaning original, brand new sh- first episodes of shows that do not yet exist. So uh, here's the process. We start with logline, which is the one sentence expression of the entire show. Um, it's the quick answer to the question of what is this about? We'll move to the sketchbook, which is like a collage of all your unsorted ideas and um, early work for the pro- projects that includes research and things like that, which will just um, collect all these fragments and scraps of what are going to become the larger show just in one place so that you can um, refer to them and uh, get the, get all your ideas out to see what fits in the show and what doesn't. Um, you're going to be able to ascertain, um, the just sort of figure out what the kind of show you're writing is um, and also bring in any pictures, videos, research material like that. Um, and just keep that all in the same place to refer back to. You're then going to move to the story beat summary, which is the like a list of events that happen in the story following the main character's journey as much as you can, and that is going to also in- contain your uh, structural notes, such as you're going to know where the midpoint is, you're going to know where the act breaks are, all that kind of stuff. Um, we'll then move to scene cards, which you'll be expanding the summary into a full paragraph for every single scene, so you know what happens on every page of the whole thing before you start. And then we go to pages, which is actually an industry term that you should get used to hearing if you've not already. Go to pages means you move from pre-writing to actually formatting things and writing scenes and writing dialogue and all that stuff so up until step five you don't need to write a single line of dialogue you don't need to write uh or organize any scenes at all um you just need to plan out what those scenes will be and make sure to do front load all the work so that you're not in the middle of it trying to figure out where to go um so what's a log line the simplest and most common expression of a premise and it's your entire story distilled down to a sentence or two So for a feature, this might include something like the inciting incident, um, who's the protagonist, what do they want, what's in the way, what happens if they fail. Um, A feature or a pilot are going to have a similar logline. So um, the series logline is going to work a little bit differently, but for a feature or for a a pilot, it's often going to look something like this. When or after the inciting incident, which is the event that pushes the story into motion, an adjective protagonist must conflict before or in order to stakes or ticking clock. 
Stakes are ticking clock being the thing at risk, the bad thing that's going to happen if your main character doesn't act, or whatever is sort of just adding urgency to the story. The adjective protagonist is going to, you're going to pick your adjective carefully to refer to some unique element of the main character that is going to inform what is uh, the tactic that they're going to use throughout the show. Uh, like, what do we say for Ozark, isn't it? Like, a fast-talking financial advisor. Okay, so he's going to use his quick wits and his quick words in order to get what he wants is sort of what we're learning from that. Or it might be something they're struggling with throughout the show. I don't know, an alcoholic detective kind of thing. Or it might be something that makes the events of the show more personal to them. You would say, I'm not sure. Uh, a, um, if it's going to be a show about a guy who becomes a dog trainer, you might say, uh, a canine phobic man must become a dog trainer, right? Is canine phobic the word? Whatever it is. But guy who's terrified of dogs has to learn how to train dogs would be like, okay, that would be a trait that's particularly relevant for that character in that show. It's going to imply what their journey is going to be because we know if they start here, where are they going to have to end up in order for them to accomplish their goal? Um, so yeah, pick your adjective carefully. It shouldn't just be like a determined detective because that's sort of the first thing we would assume that a de detective would be. A protective mother is like, we would assume a mother would be protective. It would be noteworthy if she were not, in fact, protective. Um, so don't just use the first thing that pops into your head. Pick something the character's struggling with, something that makes the events of the plot more relevant or more personal to them, or something that is going to inform the tactic that they use or whatever, what, however they're going to try to accomplish their goal. So um, let's look at some uh, more info. We don't, So you don't have to have that right away, but just be kind of like, maybe writing down some ideas as I continue through these next few slides so that you can um, start to fit, piece together what your logline might be. It doesn't have to be perfect for this class and you can um, you can just give us what you've got and we can try to formulate it into something that makes more sense if you're worried that it, it, it isn't working currently. So right now you should start trying to assemble your pilot logline and maybe and into the, this rough sort of shape and then we'll talk about series logline in a minute. And by the end of today, it would be nice if you could have at least a rough version of both of them. If you can't get it nailed down, it's totally fine. But just um, by the end of class, you should have something or at least a general idea of what you want to do. Um, so we'll go over some more stuff first. Nacho says, Cenophobia, fear of dogs. Is it Ceno or Sino? It must be Sinophobia, fear of dogs. Thanks for that. Why isn't it just canine phobia? Come on, arachnophobia, fear of spiders. Canine phobia, fear of dogs, right? Um... Monica says, I have a prior engagement, but we'll see you in the villain class. All right, great. Thanks, Monica. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you uh, in a couple days for that other class. Um, okay, let's uh, look at a few more slides first, but be, be just writing out your, your ideas for your logline at the moment. So some differences between TV and feature loglines. So feature loglines and pilot will emphasize the protagonist's goal. Um, series logline is going to be more about the character, the situation, the story world, and just setting up what we call the story engine, which is going to promise many possible episodes in that same world. A story engine would, should be, a, it, uh, we don't have a full slide on this, I don't think, but what is a story engine? It is a combination of elements in your show that will fuel further episodes. It's just like a series of points of conflict, um, elements in your world that um, seem as if they are rich for story potential and are going to continue to generate stories. If a show just feels like it's one and done, if it's like, all oh, in the course of one night, we need to accomplish this, that's not going to feel like a show, because we, if you frame it as all taking place in one night, we're going to struggle to see how that's going to last for years of TV. So a strong engine is something that is a little bit intangible and hard to fully nail down what it is. It's something that we mostly feel if it's not there, but your show should just feel like it could go on for potentially years. If what you want to write is like a more of a mini series or more of a limited series, that's also okay, but then your engine should at least feel like it can handle up to, you know, six to eight episodes. Um, pilot logline, yeah, though, is more similar, similar to the feature logline, so we should know who's the protagonist, what's the inciting incident, what do they want, what's in their way, and does it convey the right tone and genre. I'm going to bring up the uh, template again. Pilot logline should be more like when inciting incident and adjective protagonist must conflict or else sticks. Um, let's go to our next slide here. So a film embraces its core concept and delivers on it through the course of its two-hour runtime, whereas a TV series is supposed to kind of build on that initial concept over time. So that's why the series logline, the emphasis is on compelling characters and its character and world and like the, the, the foundation for the show, whereas the pilot is more like specifically in episode one, this is who, who we're following, this is what they're trying to do, and this is what happens. So be writing down ideas for both of those things. Let's go into what is a sketchbook. 
This is a place, actually, you know what? Maybe I should stop for questions before I go any, any further. Any questions so far on anything we've talked about on uh, premise, logline, or, or like the types of ideas you should be picking for the class? I have a question. Go ahead. Honor of the book. Um, I have a sketchbook that has background information for nine characters. And um, do I, the question is, do I need to show the desire of those nine individuals in the time of the pilot? Um, it, it, uh, it depends. I mean, is it an ensemble show where we, you like, um, in, some, some shows are more tightly focused on one character and follows them through their journey or whatever they're trying to do, whatever mystery they're trying to solve or bigger problem they're trying to address, or maybe it's just like a case of the week kind of thing. Um, then there's ensemble shows like Lost, where it's like, oh, every single character gets their own episode and like their whole huge story mm -hmm. arc. And um, it, it, we're going to like weave those stories together into this rich, dense tapestry. So it depends on the kind of show you want to set up. Um, like uh, if you feel that nine main characters are all going to be equally important which would be really tricky to do but possible then yeah you would actually have to show what each what is the most you know what is driving each of them what is motivating each of them all in the pilot um or at least most of them but the more likely you're going to sort of focus that down on like three or four that take a little more emphasis and importance than the others so I would say, like, try to n narrow down who's actually the most important there and then make sure that you just write everything else around their journeys. And that might require you to, like, cut a character or two from the rest of your mm. repertoire of nine that just are not supporting those three or four main characters' journeys as much. And maybe you could be like, that's something that would come in in a later episode, but I don't need for the pilot. So focus as much as you can and um, just uh, try to know the scope of the story that you want to tell and structure appropriately thank you sure other questions um yeah i have a question uh are are we writing um half hour or one hour shows or can we choose it's up to you yeah you can choose um you're a little okay. bit incentivized to choose half hour just because it's half as much work to do in a limited time frame so if you could go either way I'd recommend picking the shorter one. Um, but yeah, you gotta just pick the idea you're most excited about. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you. Other questions? Who does not even know which, does anyone not have any idea what they wanna write? Uh, I, I have an idea, but um... I, I'm not sure if I like it or not. Okay, was, that's all right. You yeah. can share what you have, and we can give you feedback on it in a little bit if that we think will help. Um, okay. Har yeah. Harlan says, me, you have no idea. Okay, that's all right. Um, we will hopefully, by the end of class today, give you some inspiration and, like, a good place to start. We're going to look at, like, um, I think this big list. I think what, before we move on, uh, I want to look at genres just to maybe kickstart anyone who is um struggling a little bit oh do i not have the genre page on here maybe i don't have the slide i was hoping for yeah it just keep going uh like it's after those other stuff i think i skipped it yeah oh here it is okay so let's go over genres really quick just be just because uh, one or two people said i have no idea what i want to write so maybe this will start to just help you start to pick the sort of thing that you want to do so what are what are genres um this is just like a collection of tropes and expectations basically things that the audience will be wanting to see and the types of thrills that are offered in each of these um different sort of categories because i like to say life is too many things at once um life is sort of you know you can have the best ice cream you've ever eaten on your life on the same day that your house gets hit by a truck right and people don't really know how to categorize those things we're like uh, life can't be all that at once. I don't know how, where to file that. So that's why we like genres because we like entertainment that is just one type of emotional experience at a time. Or if there's a couple different flavors in there, we can sort of work with that sometimes. But um, like uh, we like a limited type of entertainment um, and people like to know the sorts of thrills that they're signing up for because different people like different kinds of thrills. So those all come with their own expectations and their own sort of tropes and their own things that you just have to watch and read a lot of that 
um, and be a big fan of that genre to know what those things are. You can write in a genre that you're not as familiar with, but then you might run into traps like, oh, I'm doing all cliches or all things that have been done a million times, or I'm doing stuff that doesn't really make sense or the fans of that genre wouldn't like. Um, so probably just pick your favorite genre if you don't know what to do and write in that. Um, or failing that, at least something you're like, I could definitely do that um, if you think something, I don't know. Some people would be intimidated by doing a mystery show, for example. And I can see why. It's a lot of threads to juggle, and it's tricky to write a mystery show. So maybe you're like, I don't know, action adventure would be more straightforward in some way. That has its own challenges, but just pick the thing that you like the most. So here's your basic options. Comedy, drama, crime, sci-fi, or fantasy. We'll say sci-fi slash fantasy. Action adventure mystery thriller and horror horror is a little different than mystery thriller but often is going to be having a lot of crossover with that just like sci-fi will have crossover with fantasy action will have crossover with adventure like um there's a lot of things that are going to be overlapping between these romance as a genre is usually going to fit into comedy or drama though so rarely is a show just sold as a romance um usually it's going to be like this is a drama with a heavy romance element or this is a rom-com type show um so it's going to like kind of pick one of one or the other of those and then we have procedural which is going to be usually following some kind of institution or job like police medical legal um something like that and those are going to be more serialized sort of case of the week monster of the week thing of the week kind of shows um and then we have animated which are usually going to be 30 minutes in either comedy or action adventure but that's not necessarily prescriptive or restrictive that um you could technically say anything is animated and the way you write it is not going to be different at all um, and there's animated shows of many different genres, but um, most of the time it's going to be comedy or action adventure because that's what animation really lends itself to, and that's what people are used to in the U.S. If you're writing animated drama, there's not really a precedent for that. That doesn't really exist. You'll be the sort of first person to write an animated drama. <laughs> um, you could write, uh, I mean, and you could, always, some people might be like, Bojack Horseman's an animated drama, but yeah, and it has elements of that, but it's also just an adult comedy. Don't be silly. Um, or a show like Undone on on Amazon. That's like a sci-fi drama with a mystery element, basically. So there are there's no real limit on what you want to do. Sometimes the question might be, why is this animated exactly? Um, and you should have some kind of reason why. Usually it's because you're going to have big, crazy, bombastic, imaginative action that wouldn't really be possible within um, a uh, live-action format or something like that. Or you have like a character that has really interesting interiority and we visualize all their thoughts and her pro thinking process and like, the unique world that she lives in, in in an animated way you should just have some kind of answer as to why this is animated um but yeah let's look at a couple of these here so these are all going to fit into these general umbrella of genres up above we have game of thrones what is that one that's fantasy drama so you can pick only two don't 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 have more than two genres or else you're just going to start confusing people um because the more toppings you add onto your ice cream the more it becomes just a blob of sugar right so um, don't pick more than two. Just combine two at the very most, even if a show is a lot of things. Like, it, what is Supernatural? Is it a procedural uh, fantasy mystery thriller horror drama show? Yeah, kind of, but you would probably just say it's um, fantasy mystery thriller. Um, and then, you, in that sense, you have, like, folded out all the other stuff, or folded up all the other stuff just under those two labels, and um, just, just narrow, narrow it down as much as you can. So, Big Bang Theory, comedy, Walking Dead, horror, How I Met Your Mother, um, comedy, Supernatural, I just mentioned, Vampire Diaries, I don't watch, I think it's a, that's like a um, fantasy teen drama. Then we have Modern Family, comedy, Mentalist, that's uh, crime uh, procedural, Family Guy, comedy, Californication, dramedy, which is comedy slash drama, um, Good Wife, I'm not sure, I think it's a legal uh, procedural, or it might be a dramedy, I'm not sure, um, Simpsons, comedy, Mad Men, historical drama, Pretty Little Liars, that's Mystery Thriller, Breaking Bad, Crime Drama, Dexter, that's not Dexter's Lab. Every time, I've done this slide before, and every time I see that, that makes me laugh. I love how that says Dexter's Laboratory. Um, nope, that's Dexter. Uh, Dexter's Laboratory is animated um, comedy, sci-fi comedy, basically. Dexter is a, you know, uh, mystery thriller crime drama, basically. Uh, Bones, procedural, American Idol, that's not a scripted show. Glee, uh, musical dramedy. Um, 24, action adventure. Two and a Half Men, comedy, True Blood, fantasy drama, Archer, animated comedy. You got the idea. So pretty much everything is going to fit into just one or two of these. Does anyone have a question about genre or what genre your thing fits into or how you pick what genre you want to do or anything like this?
Okay, great. I guess um, everyone gets genre perfectly. So um, you should, if you don't know where to start and you don't have any ideas, start with this. Say, I want to write this kind of show and then think of what sort of thing would I want to maybe see? Um, what sort of thing has never been done before? Or what have, what have I always wanted there to be a show about, but there just isn't one? Or what is the show idea that was, I thought it was really cool, but then when I watched it, it didn't deliver at all. So I want to do something similar to that, but take that idea and do it way better. That can be a good place to start. Or maybe you're like, here's two shows that I really like. What if we combined them? What if we combine, I'm just going to pick two random things off of this list. I'm going to close my eyes and move my cursor till I find, oh, what did I have? Okay, well, no, I'd pick Vampire Diaries. That's one of the things I don't know. Uh, Californication meets The Mentalist. Okay, this is uh, the n n kind of comedic misadventures of a uh, crime-solving detective when he's at home, not on the cases. That's, this is kind of funny. Let's say it's going to be uh, about a detective in his off time when he's not on the job, and he's using detective skills to, in fact, solve day-to-day -day struggles. This is kind of funny. Um, so a detective who is going to, like, we, we never actually see him on the job is the hook of the show. And he's going to be using his sort of clever detective skills to, like, I don't know, get a date. Or to, um, you know, resolve an issue with his landlord. Or to, um, you know, solve a conflict with his best friend. Or to find his missing toothbrush. Or just silly things like that. A detective that we never see at work is the hook for my show that I just made up by picking two random things on here. So you can do the same thing if that's helpful for you. Just, like, pick two of your favorite shows and think of, like, how would those possibly make any sense together? Have they done one like that where it's just a, t a detective who's never on the job and he's using his skills for other stuff? That's kind of funny. Um, nice job, me. High five. Okay, let's um, look at our other slides that I skipped over here and go a little more into sketchbook and then we'll look at uh, format and stuff. Any other questions before I go on? Okay, cool. So, sketchbook. This is a place to collect your notes and sketches and ideas as you develop your story. There's no right or wrong way to do this. This is just going to be a Google Drive document that you have opened up and labeled sketchbook. You will put in any ideas that you have and, um, you know, any characters, snippets of dialogue, notes about settings or location, themes or dramatic arguments, ideas for fun premise scenes or sequences or, or just uh, places the show could go ideas for the ending, photos, drawings, or anything that inspires your writing. So you just want to keep that all in the same place. And um, write down everything that you have in your head already. If you're like, I have these swirling facts, I don't know how they fit together, just put them all down. There's nothing wrong that can be included in a sketchbook, and nothing here in, is set in stone. So all of your ideas go here. Um, and you're going to use this as your just sort of main brainstorming document until we get to next week. Any questions on the sketchbook? Does this make sense to everyone what you're doing here? So this is the kind of thing you can open now. So go to Google Drive, uh, go to new document, and label it title of show and sketchbook. Does somebody have a question? Go ahead. Oh, I heard a sound. Might have been a pet or a uh, child or something. All right. Um, so sketchbook, um, yeah, here's how to do it. Just go to Google Drive or the word processor if you really insist. But the only documents that we're sharing in, in Script Camp are going to be Google Drive documents or PDFs. We're not linking... Uh, Microsoft Word files or anything like that. So, throughout the rest of this class, you'll be adding these unsorted ideas to the sketch document with no filter, no wrong answers, ideas, scenes, characters, locations, just put it all down on the page. Okay, um, so at the top of the sketchbook, you can put these things. Title, format, that's going to be 30 minute or 60 minute, premise or status quo, we'll get more into what that means in just a few. Genre, series logline and that's the logline that's a little broader in scope and is going to not require as much urgency but it's going to be a sentence describing the world the main character and probably both the pilot logline will be underneath that and that's like a movie logline so motivation stakes and urgency and focus a little more on the main character's singular journey so put all those at the top and you're going to be filling those out as much as you can and in a little bit, so it's, we're almost halfway through class, so in about 10 to 15 minutes, we're going to start posting what you guys have, and we'll be helping you adjust these and work these and refine them into more polished log lines for the series and for the pilot. And if you have several options that you're trying to choose between, maybe we can weigh in and help you pick what you want to do. All right, time slot and format. So 30 minute or 60 minute are your main choices here. 30 minutes, 30 to 34 pages. These are usually going to be comedic or highly episodic, but that's not true all the time nowadays. There's many exceptions. We have everything from uh, mystery horror like Servant on Apple TV. That's half an hour. Dead to Me, dramedy on Netflix. End of the Effing World on Netflix, which is like a dark comedy thriller. 
a teacher on FX, which is a half hour drama. So you can do anything in either format, but the expectation is half hour will be comedy, hour long will be drama. That's like the norm. Hour long comedy is the only thing that doesn't really exist um, and that I would urge you away from. Um, that is because uh, sustaining comedic premises for a full hour is usually a, just a little bit trickier in terms of audience expectation and attention. And uh, if it is an hour long, it's usually going to be a dramedy, which is like elements of both comedy and drama. Something like Glee, which is and has like that musical sort of element too, but I mean, I wouldn't call it necessarily a musical. Um, that is going to have some more dra dramatic subplots too. Um, something like Shameless is like dark comedy drama. Um, or like Pushing Daisies is comedy, but with a mystery, heavy mystery solving element too. So if it's a, ha it's a full hour... Almost never will it be just straight comedy, so be careful with that. But beyond that, you can do kind of, again, anything you want. Hour-long is going to be really good for horror, uh, a, um, what do you call it, mystery, um, and um, sci-fi, things like that, with more world-building, or like sci-fi or fantasy, almost always are going to be full hour. Unless it's animated, in which case half-hour might, might work fine. Um, and other formats that exist that you don't have to really worry about. 15 minutes are going to be stuff like Adult Swim cartoons or some web shows or things like that. 70 plus minutes would be like limited series. And then we have variable length, such as newer streaming shows like Mandalorian that are just kind of in the Wild West and um, can be anywhere from like 35 minutes to 65 minutes. Uh, so don't really worry about that. For the purposes of writing a spec pilot for, the, for staffing or to get you jobs or reads as a, as a writing sample... You gotta just basically pick half hour or full hour. Questions on this? Okay, um, what else? Premise or status quo? These are the sort of two types of continuity within TV. What does continuity mean? Uh, it's like if if each episode is um is its own standalone thing or if it's um or if it's like an overarching story i guess yeah exactly it's how do the events in one episode connect to the next episode whether or not if if they are self-contained or if there is an overarching story yeah exactly so that means you can do either one um a premise pilot is the name for a show that is like a long movie you need to watch the episodes in order to follow the story the characters change over the course of multiple seasons. So like I just mentioned, I was watching Tokyo Vice and Severance. Those are both premise shows that have a larger overall story. And each episode doesn't necessarily follow the thing of the week type formula. Um, status quo is the opposite. I use this term. I don't really know what the official term is for this, but this is the type of show where each episode resets the characters back to the status quo, to the way things were before. You can tune into any episode in any season and still follow it just fine. The characters change very little or not at all. Maybe to some extent they do change a bit. Um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia is a show that's been on for like, what, 12 years. And the characters have gone through various interesting kind of little transformations or physical transformations sometimes, as we've seen. But ultimately, their personalities don't really change. And uh, you could still watch Always Sunny at any episode. And you would not be confused about the continuity after, like, after Frank joins, which is after season one, I believe. So, um, yeah, that's the kind of show that uh, you have to write for the pilot a completely beginning, middle, and self-contained story that has no lingering threads or no unsolved questions it has to be all uh all within that one pilot if you're writing premise you can have certain threads left hanging so that it feels like there's more tarmac for the show to go down premise pilots are more like just the first part of a feature film where we're introduced to those characters as quickly as possible and we learn about their world the world they're about to enter and we watch as they're presented with the major conflicts of the show's premise so we have down here breaking bad why does jesse's head look so giant here Jesse's head looks like the size of a, a a small car, whereas Walter's head is sort of in the foreground, a normal sized. That's just the proportions here are, are crazy. Now that I'm looking at this, um, but so Breaking Bad crime drama. I think we're all familiar with with these shows here. Um, Lost, that is a you know sci-fi ensemble drama, and Ozark, which is crime drama. These are all premise shows that require many episodes in order to um, get through the whole story. Trin asks, is it possible to get the slides? Yep, there they are. Thank you, Nacho. You can review the slides on your own there if you want to. Um, what else? A singular journey with concrete, beginning, middle, and end, and some threads are strategically hanging. By, by concrete, beginning, middle, and end, I mean over the course of multiple seasons. You don't want to write the end of the whole show within the, just the pilot. Um, and to that, to that end, you have to leave some questions unresolved. 
Um, but the end of the show should basically give us a clear peek into what the rest of the many vibrant stories that the whole world will contain. So the end of your pilot should leave us with like, oh, I, I have most, I have finished, I have like closed the book on this first chapter, but there are many chapters to come. So premise pilots are utilized usually for more sort of cinematic shows that contain major protagonist arcs that will be explored throughout the show's entire run, like Barry, or mysteries that will need to be solved, like sermons. The best way to tell if your pilot is premise or not is to ask yourself, um, if the pilot never aired, would the audience know what's going on? If you tune into an ep I never watched Game of Thrones, but occasionally I would come in while my friends were watching it back when it was on, and I would be like, I have no idea what's happening at all all um then you know it's a premise show westworld if you watch like eight episodes into westworld you would be like goodness gracious help help someone help me understand this status quo pilots thrust you into the lives of the characters um uh perhaps already perhaps at the beginning of a journey that we've that then sort of settles into the place like all the characters by the end of the pilot will settle into place and we will then have our sort of repeatable situation by the end like the it crowd um, that wherein the first episode is sort of like getting everyone where they need to be. We have these guys who work in the basement of a big um, IT department in an office building. They get a new manager, which is this kind of this lady who's never done this before. She's um, I think she's being demoted there from another department or something. Or they're trying to get rid of her from another department. So they send her down and the show starts. The inciting incident of the show is they get a new boss. Um, but some shows just drop us in the middle of their lives and it's like, oh, nope, things are already in place and they've always been like this. I just watched the cartoon called Smiling Friends on, um, I think it's on Adult Swim, but I watched it on HBO because that just includes Cartoon Network stuff. And that doesn't have an origin story or an inciting incident. That just is like, here's the characters, go. Does somebody have a question? It's called Smelling Friends? Oh, Smiling, sorry. I just... Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> Smiling Friends, yeah. It's a, a show, it's like a 10 to 15, it's like an Adult Swim comedy, so it's like 12 minute long episodes. Um, but it's about two guys who work at a company that their job is to make people smile, basically. Um, so every episode follows, they usually get a job or an assignment of some kind. It's like, this person's sad, go cheer them up. And then they show up and they try to help that person, but usually things go way off the rails. And by the end, uh, crazy things have happened. Um, so it's, a, it's bizarre, but it's a funny show that just... Um, it's a good example of just drop us in the middle of the world. We say, this is what we do week by week. Hello, it's us. We do this. Let's go. Um, we don't have to worry about how did they get here? How did they meet? Like, how did this company start? Anything like that. We just we just meet them and we just go. So you can do that as well. If your audience is tuned in the middle of season one or two without having watched the original pilot, they would have no problem following a show like this, the character and the story. That's not to say there can't be any development as the show goes on, but since you're just writing the pilot and you're not writing any more episodes, you don't have to really worry about that. Um, so the pilot is setting up a template and a formula for the rest of the show in whatever way. So procedurals like Law and Order are also, or CSI, or um, Mentalist, or um, Psych are all going to be... Actually, I haven't watched very much Psych. I think Psych is like this. But um, they're all going to sort of follow this format as well, where it's like, you could open this anywhere, and it's like, what's the case this week? And then they get, they get right into it. So um, we should immediately understand the atmosphere, tone, and scope of the show. You should introduce the dynamics of the characters and their relationships and the world they live in and the types of conflicts that they're going to be going through throughout the whole show. And it basically has to operate like a tiny little movie with the promise that there are dozens of more, more mini movies to be found within that same setup. The majority of comedies are status quo shows. Can anyone think of an exception? Are there comedies that actually build a larger overarching plot that you guys watch? Um, okay, I, I, I could be wrong because I haven't seen it in a little, very long time, but uh, Friends, maybe? Friends builds to some sort of larger overarching plot, really? Oh, no, I, have, I haven't seen it in a while. I, I think I'm wrong. I, I haven't, I haven't, I don't watch it, so I, I, you could be right for all I know. It just seems to me more of a status quo show. But I think that what you might be referring to is sort of more like the relationships that change over time within Friends. I think that's going to be, that's probably what I'm guessing is going to be the major arcs of the show it's not like there are major like big plot things but it's probably like over time these characters get together and they're together for this season then they break up then like over time these characters get together in this season so my thought would be you're not entirely wrong that's probably just a little more of a status quo show that has overarching elements and a lot of sitcoms will kind of do that where they will be like we're generally we're gradually drifting these characters to being together and then eventually they will be together for a while then they break up or you know they will like we'll be slowly pushing them around 
but in general you could still pick up friends anywhere and, and mostly get it i think i don't i don't watch it so feel free to correct me otherwise but um that would be my thought there but in general yeah i think the the fact that it's so tough to come up with these kind of proves that most comedies are just you pick it up anywhere i think uh, crazy ex-girlfriend on cw is a musical dramedy basically that does have i think a more of a uh, a overarching plot but um that's a, a pretty rare exception and is more it's an hour long anyway so it's not gonna really fit this normal format um harlan says good place to party down and arrested development okay great yes three fantastic examples um i couldn't think of those off the top of my head but you're totally right each of those is in fact a build as it goes type of show Arrested Development in particular, with how complex the plot is. Season 4 of Arrested Development is like a Rubik's Cube of a story. It's actually kind of insane. Um, Party Down is another good one. That's an hour-long dramedy, but yeah, same sort of thing. Trailer Park Boys I've not seen. I couldn't weigh in on that one. Is that on Adult Swim, or is that on... Um, or is that a Canadian show? I don't actually know what that's on. But yeah, so you get the idea that status quo usually going to be comedy, and comedy is usually going to be status quo. But there's this hybrid sort of thing, too, or soft premise shows, which I don't have a ton of advice for, but tend to usually lean in one direction or the other, or they, like, become one or the other over time. Like, Wilfred starts as a uh, status quo thing of the week kind of show, but by the end, the character is trying to unravel a almost Lovecraftian mystery. Um, so that kind of uh, is a bizarre hybrid that you shouldn't necessarily try to emulate. Atlanta, I don't even exactly know. I've watched the whole first season, and I fully don't really know if it's premise or status quo. Venture Brothers, again, starts as more thing of the week and then become like develops these bigger plots over time. So um, you should probably just lean towards one or the other of these and not try to innovate too much. Just uh, try to do one of these things really, really well before you start trying to you know break or advance the medium. All right, so log lines. So what are we trying to do? Um, oh, here's a comment in the chat. Norseman's kind of a hybrid, says Nacho. Kind of an office-style mockumentary about a village of Vikings, but the story arc is more important. Yeah, I saw the pilot of that one, um, so I, w I guess I'm not sure how, how it worked exactly, but if there is an overall plot, that is a bit of an exception then. That's a foreign show. Um, I believe it's... Nor is that Norwegian or Danish? It's English. I, I guess it's maybe... A British Scandinavian co-production or something, but it's right. all in English, just with, you know, funny accents, kind of. Right, 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 right. Um, but uh, y yeah, that um, that is uh, going to be one of those sort of weird exceptions, probably. Okay, um, so what are we trying to do in a TV logline? Um, uh, imply a show that is visual and dynamic and about people doing stuff. We don't want to have a show that's about people just thinking about or discussing stuff discussing is a very non uh dramatic idea um mostly we are trying like if you're just going having characters go back and forth about their opinions on things that's not really advancing towards a goal so we should imply that the primary action is going to be tracked through visual you know tangible goal posts we're going to avoid intangible goals and nebulous finish lines showcase a unique and fascinating hook which might be some sense of irony or new or different pov or some variation or, or interesting mashup of familiar elements we like to have an element of the familiar mixed with something fresh and unique. And in um, in publishing, they talk about this idea of the bridge. And that is, you want to start with something that the audience is kind of familiar with, and then use that as a bridge to take them somewhere new. Uh, does that make sense? So we want to, um, if you're going to do something radically crazy and different, then maybe if you start in somewhat more familiar territory, you can like walk the audience there in such a way that we won't get lost along the way. I hope that makes sense. Um, Loglines should make clear that the story has an audience. Sometimes your idea might just be something that only really appeals to you. And if you're just practicing and getting better, that's not a huge problem. Like you just have to write and finish and move on and to the next thing and just get used to doing that for a while. Um, but eventually you have to probably write ideas that other people will like i would think um so uh if you're finding that anyone who you tell the idea to is like i don't know this seems sort of strange i don't really get it then maybe you should uh, uh consider trying different ideas or look at what element are people bouncing off of and try to identify that and work around that or um adjust something to compensate with that or maybe it's too different or too unfamiliar and we're just like not understanding what you're doing at all 
at the end of the day, you can still decide to write it and be like, I know this works and I'm going to prove that this works and I'm going to be stubborn and die on this hill and I'm going to do this no matter what. And that's fine. It's your it's your pilot and you just have to get better and just do your idea and move on to the next idea. So no huge deal, but um, try to, um, you know, your pilot idea should be one that you tell to somebody and if they're a fan of that genre, they're excited and they're like, yeah, I definitely watch that. That's the reaction we're going for. You want to give us a main character or a world that's rich with story potential and also just make sure you're clearly delineating between premise or status quo so you know for sure is this going to be a singular journey like a movie or is this going to be a series of episodic situations so let's look at some examples series log lines series log lines going to be a little different from the pilot log line which we looked at earlier in that we don't need as strong of a sense of urgency and it can it's describing the overall arc of the entire thing so let's look at ozark which is one of my favorite ones this is a half hour or sorry hour long crime drama a fast-talking financial advisor drags his family from chicago to the missouri ozarks where he must launder $500 million in five years to appease a drug boss. So every question is pretty much answered here. We don't have the inciting incident because series logons don't normally need one, but the inciting incident is implied in saying he needs to appease a drug boss, implies he angered a drug boss in some kind of way. So basically when he angers a drug boss, uh, a financial advisor gets in trouble with the you know, organized crime like cartels and is forced to move his entire family to the Ozarks of Missouri like the, you know, the mountains and the forests where he has to launder $500 million in five years. That tells us the kind of conflicts that we're going to be doing on an episode-to-episode basis are going to be related to money laundering. So he's going to be getting involved in crime shenanigans, trying not to get killed by mobsters. And it tells us that the show is going to take place over basically five seasons. And we have an understanding of the walls and the scope and how long this is going to take and what kind of ride we're in for. Like, what is the length of the track that we're on? We have the, the stakes and the antagonist and the sense of danger. This drug boss and his minions are going to be harassing this financial advisor as he tries to launder all this money. We have the unique and interesting setting. We have a unique and interesting main character with a fascinating tactic that they're going to use to have to get through all these interesting, dangerous situations. Um, and we have a clear goal with a tangible uh, finish line. So everything is there. Um, here's a status quo show. So you write these series log lines a little different because we don't need a goalpost. A black family man struggles to gain a sense of cultural identity while raising his kids in a predominantly white upper middle class neighborhood. Okay, so for this one, we don't really have a goalpost. I mean, gaining a sense of cultural identity is going to describe the sorts of conflicts that are going to be seen on an episode to episode basis. So we understand there could be a hundred seasons of this show and it would still, the premise would still hold up just fine. If you have too concrete of a goalpost or a status quo show, it will not feel like a status quo show anymore. So struggling to gain a sense of cultural identity is going to be the main conflict and it can be so this is a little more uh it's a little broader a little more abstract it's just going to descri- describe like a type of conflict rather than one specific thing that the character has to do before this deadline and then also we have the interesting world and the clash of character and world so um you know uh this is um the the predominantly white upper middle class neighborhood is going to be the setting for this entire thing It's going to be where we're deriving a lot of our other characters and our comedy from. Breaking Bad, uh, crime drama one hour long. A high school chemistry teacher diagnosed with lung cancer turns to manufacturing and selling meth to secure his family's future. Okay, so um, securing his family's future is, again, a little bit more of an abstract, longer-term goal for this. Um, But we have interesting character and interesting world. So the world of, you know, uh, drug dealers is going to be um, combined with this sort of nerdy chemistry teacher who's going to have to learn the ropes from the, and work his way up from the ground floor of that. So we get a sense of what the progression of the show will be, the change of the main character over time, and also just the, the sort of story that will have an engine that can fuel multiple seasons. Any questions on series loglines so far? Okay, so hopefully we're clear on these. Remember, main character should be described in this. So uh, a series logline should give us a sense of interesting character and interesting world that they live in. Pilot logline, again, is more sort of formulaic, inciting incident. When inciting incident occurs in the pilot, an adjective protagonist must conflict or else stakes. So remember, this is like a movie logline with motivation, stakes, and urgency at the forefront. Let's check the time and check the chat. Uh, We're going to start in just a minute here. We're going to post our student log lines. Uh, There's no no questions in chat. Great. So have we chosen our pilot idea? Let's post our title, genre, 
format slash time slot and series log line in the chat. You can say if it's premise or status quo. If you're trying to choose between multiple ideas, you can post them all and we'll help you decide. So go ahead and post what you've got. Wherever you are, however much you have at this point, just give us what, what, what is finished and we will um, work with that. So I'll give you guys a minute to do that. I'll also take any questions in the meantime, if you guys are struggling to put something together or just are not sure what to do, feel free to unmute and ask your question on voice or use the text chat on the left-hand side of the window. We've still got no ideas in the chat. Um, do you guys want to weigh in and just maybe speak your ideas out loud and maybe work through it that way? Oh, here's one. Thank you, Harlan. And Harlan, if you could update this with title, genre, format, time slots. So is this hour long or half hour? Premise or status quo? Does anyone else want to discuss your idea and just, uh, you know, even if you only have the basics or just a few, a few pieces of it, you can just, now is the time to tr start putting those things together into logical order. So we've got a few folks typing, so I'll give you guys like another minute or two to do this, and then we'll just have to move on with whatever we've got. Thank you, Simmer. And so you should be ready to, once once I call on you and you've posted your idea, you'll be reading some of these things out loud and just be ready to answer some questions on your idea. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Trin. All right, we've got so keep posting, keep posting these, um, and uh, we will. Oh, thank you, Brandon Delorean. Perfect. All right, here's four to work with, so this should be enough for the rest of class. Um, thanks so much, guys. Let's we're gonna start at the top with Harlan, and uh, we're gonna work, go through these. So I'm gonna ask you to read out some of the basics. I'm gonna ask you questions and um, work on developing this idea a little bit. Try to refine it as much as possible by the end of class today, and um, allow you to have enough so that you can get started with your sketchbook uh, by the end of class. So um, let's start with Harlan. Go ahead, Harlan, and read out your, oh, it's untitled, but go ahead and read the genre, <laughs> format, and logline. Sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, Western action adventure with a touch of detective, uh, ongoing episodic, uh, status quo reset each episode, 22 minute pulpy adventure. Actually, I'm, I was kind of inspired by, uh, what Tarantino was trying to do with bounty law okay. in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I really like the concept of bounty law. Uh, so series log line is Harlan Greenboro travels to the old American West, helping out those in need. Pilot log line would be in order to secure a prize horse. Harlan Greenboro enters a deadly race with winner takes all stakes. All right, thanks for this. Um, so this is a western show. I don't think we've had anyone write a western show so far, so that's great. I love westerns, by the way, and I write them myself. So this, you're in uh, good company here. Um, let me. Uh, space this out and take a look at this um hope you guys can see this right okay good um so uh what and, and let me take the chat window off for now and bring up the browser like that okay so untitled western adventure with a touch of detective uh 22 minutes okay great so uh harlan greenborough travels the old american west helping out those in need who is harlan greenborough is that a real person no, it's a fictional character I made. I made a I made a feature film uh, about the character. So this is this would kind of be a sequel series. Okay. Um. So how would you describe this character if you just had an adjective and a noun to work with? Like, imagine we don't know who this is, so you have to explain who this is. Okay. So he's a uh, he's a treasure hunter who spent the most of the last twenty five years in Africa and uh, parts of Asia and stuff like that. But he's uh, he's recently returned to America. Okay, so we can describe him as a treasure hunter, sure. And how? What is like an adjective that we could use for him? Like, what's the like a main element of his personality, or something that gets him into trouble all the time, or some unique tactic that he uses, or something he's struggling with? Uh, he's he's a little bit of a antithesis to your regular Western hero in that he sucks. He has no aim. He has a terrible shot, and so he's a brawler. Oh, he okay. he. You know, he's into his fist, but his main weapon is, you know, there, he's clever. There's always another way. Uh, most of the time, he likes to avoid violence, but is very capable of it when necessary. I see, I see. Okay, this is like a classic 50s. Uh, like you mentioned, Bounty Law is a just like a Western yes. show from the 50s or 60s, isn't it? So this is like a old-fashioned pulp-style Western show. That's great. I love that kind of stuff. I would maybe say a rough-and-tumble treasure hunter in that case, implying that that's, that's going to be... His solution to his problems is he's going to have to fight his way out most of the time is kind of what you're saying. Um, and uh, the the um, the idea of just traveling the West and helping out those in need is, you know, it's not incredibly unique necessarily. But if if the situations that he gets into are unique and funny, then or, or it, this sounds like it could be comedic. Is this comedic? I would call it lighthearted, but Light. I wouldn't. Okay. And, you know, and with elements of comedy, but... Gotcha. more my my touchstone was the mummy 1999 that was the tone i tried to go for i see i see okay well yeah that's like sort of classic pulp stuff you're in good company i might say kung fu would be another good comp for you if you're looking for one what was the other one yeah. kung fu um and that's just about you know wandering kung fu guy helps people out basically is the the entire idea so you should have two comps the comps are going to be this show meets that show so i don't know if bounty law is not a real show but there's a, there's plenty of western shows to pick um, to pick from, so you might say, I don't know, Gunsmoke meets Kung Fu or something like that. I don't actually, I think Gunsmoke might be an ensemble and yours is, does not sound like an ensemble. So maybe just try to find a Western show that kind of fits this format. Justified. <laughs> Justified. Yeah, that's modern. It, this isn't modern day, is it? No, this is Old West. Oh, it's 1891, but definitely right. invokes the kind of funness of Justified. I see, I see. Okay, so um, nothing particularly wrong here. It does sound just sort of a little bit down the middle. It's like, this is a Western show. Okay, fair enough, but no big problem there. I mean, you should just it's better to write something that is more down the middle and just get used to finishing something, writing it to the best of your ability and moving on to the next thing. Like writing something shockingly original is not really the goal of these boot camps. Um, the pilot log line is in order to secure a prize horse, he enters a deadly race with winner takes all stakes. What do you mean to secure a prize horse just to get it? You mean secure, like to get it for himself? Yeah, probably. He had a good horse at the end of his first adventure, but he lost it. Needs a new horse. That just doesn't sound like helping out anyone in need, though. That doesn't sound like it's part of the premise that you've set up. Uh, yeah, I know. So, I guess in a show like this, it would probably be because a little girl's like, those bad ranchers stole my horse, or something like that, wouldn't it? I mean, like, if he's helping someone, then... Or it feels like maybe he needs a good horse in order to help someone, 
or something like that. It just should tie into the premise that you're setting up a little bit. If it's every the week, he's going to be like, he's like doing a task for someone, right? The kind of pre the kind of premise I had with this was he'd he'd find a non-violent solution to win the race. Oh, but, uh, wait, aren't most aren't most races non-violent? This one isn't. This one's kind of because it takes place in New Mexico, and at the time that wasn't part of the American. That wasn't part of America, so there, it's kind of lawlessness. It's kind of like the the last you know place you can kill a guy, and it, it's just legal. <laughs> okay, well he needs a good reason to enter this then. Um, Thank you. Which which means that you would if if he needs a, a good reason, then it's got to be someone who he, someone who requires his help in a really kind of urgent or desperate way. So I would just look into the motivation of your pilot and like, why is he actually doing this should tie into what you set up in the premise. So if every episode there's going to be a person who gives him a job, then the pilot should reflect that. Cause the pilot is like a, is like a mini version of what the entire show is going to be. Okay. Any questions on this? Thank you, Connor. Okay, great. Thank you, Harlan. Um, let's, uh, Wait, is the is the are you named after the character or is the character named after you? Or wait a minute, why? <laughs> what's going on there? Is that just your username because it's the character's name? Just named a plum. I see. Okay. All right. Um, what if this was based on your own life? I was like, wait, this isn't him, is it? Uh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> right? no character. If you, actually, I, I if you actually were a wandering yeah, treasure hunter, right? I would be. I'd be very happy. Uh, I'm 160. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Uh, Simmer, let's start with You Are Not Anonymous. Oh, sorry, it's muted. Um, okay, so... Yeah, the title's new, You Are Not Anonymous. It's 60 Minutes. It's a crime mystery thriller. It's, uh... Very inspired by Mr. Robot and this other comic book that I've been reading recently. Um, and the series logline is A paranoid college student turns into a vigilante hacker to take down rich... Powerful people who are supposedly untouchable. Okay. And the pilot logline is, when a college student hacks into his professor's computer, he finds a horrific discovery that turns his world upside down. I, I, I don't... I, that phrasing kind of seems cliche, but I don't know how else to put it. It's all good. So <clears throat> this um, seems like it's working pretty well. Let me just um, try to pick just two genres instead of three, I would say. Um, oh, okay. So... Uh, yeah, three, three is a bit too many, but a paranoid college student turns into a vigilante hacker to take down rich, powerful people who are supposedly untouchable. Um, why does he do this? Um, because in, in the pilot, he finds uh, very messed up stuff on his professor's computer, and he finds out that he's connected to all this. Oh, so that so the pilot is the reason why that the, that the premise sets into place? Okay, I see. Um, so yeah. when a college student hacks into his professor's computer, he finds a horrific discovery that turns his world upside down. Um, and then he has to do what as a result of that? Uh, he kind of hacks his way into the, into like this, um, uh, this like evil syndicate, I guess. <laughs> but but at the same time, they're they're also trying to find out who's the one who um, who hacked into one of them. Okay, so you see how what I've done here with the if you're watching the stream, um, oh, I've just oh, sort of um, taken out the middle of this. So when a college student discovers horrific secrets on his professor's computer, that's where you should start this because the pilot logline oh, as okay. is only is taking us up to the inciting incident. So it seems like you're only describing the first like 15 minutes of the show, whereas you should be telling us what we're doing throughout the whole pilot episode. So start with this. The inciting incident is really when he discovers these secrets. He now has to what before what like he has to take down the professor before the professor has hitman murder him something like that like whatever the actual specific stakes of are the episode we want to know and then what once the inciting incident or the catalyst occurs what does your character now have to do before what time frame or set of ticking clock stakes you know oh well i was gonna have it um uh so he so that I think like he, he debates whether to turn the, the professor in, but then he decides to do it like anonymously, like turn it in um, to the police. But then the professor gets uh, killed and his murder is covered up as a suicide. Oh. So I should say he must. That's at the end though, right? Yeah, that, that's at the end. So okay, we don't need to say must... what happens at the end. So we would just say he must like figure out what is he doing over the course of the ep most of the episodes. So think of what's in the middle of the episode. What's going to be like acts two, three, and four, and then try to sum that up. 
I don't I, I can't I won't like try to do it for you but just this is what you'd want to sort of probably fill out he must do this yeah. one specific tangible goal before this specific thing happens so is the professor onto him uh, is he going to get in trouble in some way? Is the professor going to do something bad if he doesn't expose him? Like, think of what's the deadline? Why does he have to do this before a specific moment? Okay. Right. Any questions Thanks. on this? Um, no, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, thanks for doing this. This sounds good as well. Uh, yep, very sort of Mr. Robot with, with a much younger character. Uh, could be interesting to see how his specific tactics come into play. Um, so looking forward to more. Thanks, Simmer. Let's go to Carmen. Hello. Hi, Carmen. You want to read out what you have for us here? Okay, the title is Pharmakia. Um, 60 minutes, perhaps, but I think I can do it in 30. Okay. Um, supernatural family drama, um, question mark. Um, I am have a weakness with the genres, as we discussed yesterday. The series logline, a resolute teenage girl with a pharmaceutical drug addiction must take action to destroy the sorcery demons behind a global racketeering operation. Racketeering or racketeering? I'm sorry? Did you say racketeering is, or is it racketeering? Racketeering. Racketeering, okay, I just heard you wrong. I was like, wait, they're making rockets? I'm confused, okay, got it. <laughs> All right, um, go ahead and read the log line, line mm -hmm. okay. um, Travis Warlin, a defiant 16-year-old girl struggling against the madness of a drug addict father, must enter the world of soul travel to defeat a sorcery demon. Okay, uh, a lot going on here. Um, so let me just ask some basic questions on this one. Um, a teenage girl with a drug addiction must take action to destroy sorcery demons behind racketeering feels like I, I'm not understanding the connection between these things. Um, why does she have to do this? Um, they're going to destroy everyone. Uh, everyone through these in the world? Uh, basically, yeah. Uh, demons are going to kill everyone in the world through racketeering? Huh? Can you explain? Yes. <laughs> Um, okay. Let me, um, let me quickly define racketeering. Like, for example, um... Dishonest and fraudulent <laughs> business dealings. Wait a minute. How are they going to kill everyone in the world through fraudulent business dealings? Okay, um, like, they offer, they, you know, um, let's, just for, for example, you go to a psychiatrist and they say, this is the drug that you need, right? Mm-hmm. Well, the whole point of it is so that they can also um, get you hooked on that drug and then offer them the other drug that you need to get off that drug. Okay. So it's like this whole cycle. Mm -hmm. How is that going to kill everyone in the world? I'm still going to figure that part out. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> that doesn't even sound like racketeering. That sounds like basically poisoning people, though. Like, I just the, the way that this okay. is described is just kind of strange to me. Um, I think that uh, if you were, if the if the point is they're going to be using sort of pharmaceuticals to try to I don't know take take over the world. I mean, if they're trying to kill everyone in the mm -hmm. world, this does not seem like a good way to do it. Not that many people get to go to psychiatrists and get prescription medication. I mean, like that's expensive to do, and not every like there's going to be billions of people in the world who aren't doing that. So I'm not quite sure why that plan makes sense. But maybe you have to work it out and just don't know yourself yet. But the point is, um, so. Uh, a resolute teenage girl with a pharmaceutical drug addiction must take action to destroy... And why, do, why is she the only one who can do this? Okay, so she has that gift of um, traveling in, in, in the other realm of soul travel. Oh, okay. So you've left that out of the series logline. That a, a teenage girl who, with soul traveling powers, right? I don't even know. I don't exactly know what soul yeah. traveling powers means. Does that mean she can leave her body and what fly around? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, well, there's a little more to the gift than just that, though. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's just really hard to explain um, in such a short, size sentence. But going back to how you were um, forcing me to really think this out, mm -hmm. uh, because. 
There are a number of things, because I've already started writing it. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess, I, I think I'm like 17 pages into it. Um, I don't have like a solid sketchbook for it, but I do have nine characters that are very well flushed out, um, pretty well, <laughs> relatively well flushed out um, for their conflict and their desires. Okay. And um, so, yeah, forcing myself to really think about, because um, it's broad, right, and vague, kill everyone, right? I mm -hmm. mean, there has to be more than that. So something more specific. So part of the drama happens on the civilian side. We're going back to that civilian versus the military. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other part of it happens within uh, the military industrial complex. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these things are happening and the continuous, um, you know, the continuous, you know, this is happening over here while this is happening over there. So there are these parallels and um so yeah um i need to force myself to think more specifically about this because i do understand it it's very clear in my head i just need to be able to articulate it in this format of uh the two log lines mm -hmm. okay yeah. so i'm i'm making just a little a few adjustments here that might uh clarify things a little bit just in terms of your series log line what i've changed and you don't have to do this but this is, i'm just like working out how i would do this a pill-addicted teenage mm -hmm. girl with astral projection powers must destroy the demons behind a pharmaceutical doomsday plot. Um, and that, uh, I don't know if you would describe it as astral projection, but that's just the closest way I can, that's the, the closest thing I can think of that most people would know that um, yeah. is sort of like this. Is that kind of what this is like? Yeah, it, it, absolutely. That is what it is. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't think of that, those words at the time. Mm -hmm. When I was um, writing this, and I think that the log lines that I put in for the table reading next week are not even these because when I was filling out the form, I just kind of wrote what came to my mind at that moment. It's okay. Nope. I think I'm just having a problem with project management issues. It, um, yeah, it, it's all know. good. It's um, I, I would recommend just try to write one script at a time, finish it, then move on to the next one. But if you need to sort of like dabble in a couple or figure out which one you like the most before committing to them, then that's that's also okay. Um, so for the series log, I think this might work a little better. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily say why she has to do this, but the fact that she is addicted to pills and the fact that the demons are behind a pharmaceutical plot does sort of start to connect a little bit more for me. The pilot log line, you don't, we don't need a character's name. Um, struggling against the madness of a drug addict father hmm the, is he wait the madness of a drug addict father I, you could just probably say something like str struggling or struggling with her i'm not quite sure exactly what to do there but the madness of just seems a little strange to me um must enter the world of soul travel to defeat a sorcery demon so this is like the first demon of many that she's going to be fighting basically is this kind of like buffy the vampire slayer meets like uh i don't quite know <laughs> uh what what are the comps for this I, we as you know that's one of my weaknesses uh -huh. the comps and we need to do a lot more um tv watching and script reading mm -hmm. become more knowledgeable about that kind of thing Okay, I'm going to suggest for you Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Devs. Okay. If you've watched Devs on FX, that's a show about a woman trying to take down a big sort of conspiracy um, on her own, basically, sort of thing. Um, and there's heavy sci-fi elements. Um, there's no magic in it, but it's like borderline magic sci-fi. So maybe check that out if you want to see a show that's sort of... A, it's a it's a miniseries. There's like eight episodes, um, and it's uh, quite good. Um, so I'm going to say Buffy meets Devs for now, but you can pick your own uh, whenever you want to. Um, and, uh, must enter the so just, I would just be a little more specific with your, um, events here in the pilot log line. So probably give us an inciting incident. Uh, so when this specific thing happens, this character must do this in order to fix or address that problem. So, uh, let me just write that out a little bit. When inciting incidents, A defiant 16 year old girl and i would probably i'm gonna suggest maybe taking out the drug addict father here for now unless that's the unless that's part of the inciting incident i don't know when her drug addict father gives her a black eye or something like that you see how that might play into the to the catalyst but it may not 
Um, okay. A defiant 16-year-old girl must enter the world of soul travel. Doesn't quite make sense to me. You might say she must uh, learn to harness her astral projection powers or something like that to defeat okay. and when you say just a sorcery demon just make sure we're clear on like who this is and why this is happening exactly um so maybe the inciting incident is like when a demon prescribes her dad a mind or when, when she when she figures out a demon a local pharmacist is handing out mind control pills a defiant 16 year old girl must harness her astral projection powers to to defeat it Something like that. So just be a little more specific with the antagonist or with the like why she's doing this um, specific thing. Um, and okay. yeah, make sure we have the catalyst or inciting incident so we understand what's getting the story started. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to be able to stay in here. Um, I would love to, but I'm about to be overrun by family members. That's okay. But, um, We're, thank class you. is almost over. So yeah, no, no problem at all. We'll, um, if you, I, I know you're in a couple or have tried out a couple of boot camps at this point, but yeah, which, whichever project you want to um, continue with or, or continue in the class for, we'll see you at the next one. Thank you. Thanks, Carmen. Be writing, everyone. Bye. All right. So we got two more. We got 20 minutes. We got just enough time for two more. We got 10 minutes each. Let's start with Trin on No Ordinary Love. Yeah, and this is very much just thrown out there, so I'm not sure if I'm even really ready to be reviewed as a pilot, but the, the general idea is it's really based off the Twilight, reversing the characters and making it a miniseries, you know, so, and it's just something for me to kind of play with and get experience writing a miniseries. Okay, um, so this is, this doesn't quite sound, this sounds like more of a fantasy drama than a thriller to me. Um, if there's going to be vampires or paranormal stuff, then, then... Or magical creatures, then fantasy has to be in there somewhere. Um, okay, so what would you call it? What genre? Well, fantasy? What? It sounds like fantasy drama. I mean, it could be thriller, but okay. potentially, if if this is going to be like really, really urgent, high stakes, dangerous situations every single episode, is that how you see it, or is it if it's more? Like, no, no, no. Okay. probably more. Of, I had drama at first, and then I thought, well, maybe it's, I don't because I don't really know. So fantasy drama sounds probably yeah, correct. like True Blood or something like that. I would think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, a mentally challenged teen boy. Well, go ahead and read it out loud. Yeah, a mentally ch challenged teen boy obsessed with vampires unwittingly ends up dating one when he's moved to a new town. Um, and like, I, I took all of 30 seconds to write that, so I really haven't thought it through. But okay. kind of the idea rolling around in my head is that this boy moves to a town. He starts, he's always been obsessed with vampires. Everybody's going to think he's crazy when he like slowly realizes he's dating one. Hmm. Okay. Um can I ask what you mean by mentally challenged exactly? I mean, I know that, like, uh, that can mean a lot of different things. Yeah, and I, those probably aren't the right words either. Like I said, I haven't really thought it through totally. But other, th other than, like, he's going to have something in his psychological makeup where people just don't believe him because they think he's a little off. Okay, um, I would think that may not be the best way to, or the best words to use to, to describe the character. Um, I think you yeah. want to just be a little more specific with it if it's like an autistic teenage boy or a boy with like this okay. particular disorder or something like that just to we, we don't want to be general with that kind of thing it's the sort of you know that's the kind of character that you have to do your research on and be respectful in your portrayal of which I'm sure you, you know all these things but that that just means that um, the more specific you can get the better so um, I'll say like specific disorder or um, you know let's say condition obsessed with vampires unwittingly ends up dating one if he's obsessed with them how does he not realize that this girl oh, yeah, he's meeting is one of them yeah like i said this probably isn't really even ready to review because i only i threw it out there because nothing was going out there and it's it was like the closest i had to tv series rolling around in my head okay so. yeah no problem so i, mean, I should this... take another stab at it uh, you certainly could i mean yeah it's, i'm sure there's a way that this could work i mean let the right one in is a great comp to use for something like this if i which you've probably seen um, but, uh, and, and maybe find out what is the element that makes this more of a TV show? Like, um, is this going to be, um, is there going to be a big ensemble of other characters in this? Are there other magical creatures in the world besides just vampires or is it just vampires? Um, so any of these things might help you pick your other comp. Like if it's going to be, if there's going to be a lot of action in it, it's going to be maybe meets underworld, right? Which if, if there's going to be like shootouts and stuff like that with werewolves versus vampires and swamp monsters and things then maybe or, or uh -huh. like that's going to be more like blade or underworld or something but if it's going to be more like 
routine problems <laughs> week by week. Like, I'm going to be late for prom. I need my vampire friend to fly me to prom kind of thing. Then you might want to pick a different comp that's more like, um, well, let the right one in and Twilight seem to cover so much of the same ground. L let's say something like Riverdale or something like that if you're going to have more, like, teen ensemble show. So just, yeah, pick the, pick the comps carefully, and that should help you kind of snap a few other m main elements into place. Any questions on this? Okay, and maybe also the last thing would be just specify he now has to do what. So he ends up dating one when, he moves, when he's moved into town and must now defend their relationship from XXX problem. The local vampire hunter community? Question mark. The, uh, you know... <laughs> gangs of roving mummies, whatever it is. Thank you. Sure. Can I spell the word relationship? Yes, I can. All right. Um, so looks like we have one more. Let's get Brandalorian on. Are you with us? Not hearing your mic if you're talking. I notice you are unmuted, but maybe you're on push to talk mode. Or you can weigh in in the text chat if you want to. Or maybe having a mic problem. He says you can hear us. Give you one second. Okay, I'm gonna post it in the uh, in the document here while you fix that. And if you can't end up getting the mic to work, I can just read it out and uh, give feedback on it myself. Hello. Hi, we hear you now. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, so yeah, the title is White Wind Farms. Um, the format would be a 60-minute premise. Uh, it could either be a horror thriller or a horror mystery. Okay. Um, and then the series log line is a young woman struggling with her sense of identity, finds herself in a farming cult, and slowly comes to realize this. Uh, she must under overcome isolation, brainwashing, and the sense of home she's developed to escape the clutches of the cult and unlearn the, their ideology. Uh, and then uh, this first uh, episode is more just kind of put together during this class here, so it, it's kind of still rough. But uh, when a young woman joins a farming collective, she questions whether she is making th the right choice, but fears she is already in too deep to back out now. All right, awesome. Thanks for that. So some good stuff here. I mean, um, this is uh, an exciting premise. This is something like, um, did you see the movie called Martha, Marcy, May, Marlene? I did, yeah. That's uh, on my list here of uh, like uh, movies that uh, have kind of inspired me. Because um, uh, at first this was going to be a uh, feature, but I I feel like I have some uh, like a bit more of a mystery that I think would unfold well into a miniseries. Okay, great. Um, and if you have uh, like movies about people trying to leave cults, um, if you there's a movie called Faults, which is also really good that you should check out. I haven't seen that one. I'll add that one to the list. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, it's about a guy who specializes in deprogramming people who are in cults, which means that, and I think this is a real thing, he needs to basically kidnap them and, like, lock them in a hotel room and, like, keep them there, where, and in the meantime, uh, he, like, aggressively tries to counteract their, you know, brain programming. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. I'm into it. Look that up. And the main character is really interesting. Um, so, um, what is a farming cult? Um, so it, it's, uh, in, in, in a sense, like, uh, a community that, uh, would be like, uh, you know, in terms of cults, generally the final step is to like, uh, isolate people as much as possible. So like going to a farm in the middle of the nowhere of nowhere is like very isolating. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and and ag again, it tr if you're trying to get out of a cult, if you're more isolated in that sense, it's it's a lot more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what they do is they're they're trying to be off grid, self sufficient kind of thing. Um, so they they farm to get their food and whatnot. What's so bad about this cult? Like, why would she have to escape? That's where the mystery comes in, where there's, um, she slowly unravels that there's, like, a ritual sacrifice going on, and okay. that uh, one of the main things would be that she learns th that she's been chosen to be the next sacrifice. Oh, okay. That's that's a lot of high stakes there. So yeah, I, 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 I didn't quite know how to fit that into the, um, the log line without just, like, giving away everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so, a young woman struggling with her sense of identity, um, I would probably say something like, begins to unravel the dark secrets of her farming community, something like that, because does she think it's a cult to begin with? No, she right. she just thinks, like, this is going to be a liberating way to live her life, because she she's kind of... Uh, unsure of the way she should live she's like still trying to find herself and uh, mm -hmm. she maybe sees uh, or finds something th uh, that she doesn't like about society and this seems like a better alternative i see okay so i'm gonna just streamline this a little bit um, that would be helpful because i found this a little bit too wordy for my liking right 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 and um she must actually we can probably just say Um, to escape. Just something like this, I think, will work for now. A young woman struggling with her sense of identity begins to unravel the dark secrets of her secluded farm community and must escape the leadership's sinister clutches. So um, I think that a lot of what you had in here was sort of implied. Uh, even the sense of struggling with her identity is a little bit implied. So if you can pick a different adjective for her that might tell us more like, what's her personality or like a tactic that she's going to be using? Um, is she, you, you know, like think of what makes her unique or sets her apart from other people because a lot of people would str are struggling with their sense of identity. But this would be just be like, you should tell us what's going to make this person uniquely interesting to watch. So I'm just going to suggest adjective, interesting adjective. Um, and uh, besides that, I think this is, um, as, as far as the series logline goes, we can be a little broader use a little bit of a wider scope and say she's just begins to unravel their dark secrets and soon must escape their clutches um Perfect. for the pilot logline just so she joins in the pilot um it's it, i either want it to be that she's already joined but she's still kind of new kind of um or or that she has just uh been recruited and has is the new person the new person to the call hmm that to me doesn't quite seem like she would be fully like if she gets recruited then starts investigating right away she doesn't really have to undo any brainwashing does she right so that's why kind of why I, f I figured it'd be better to start kind of in the action where she's already in it and she's been so. in it for a little little while in my opinion this should be she's been in there for a long time she's like a diehard devotee to the farming community or whatever even though you know she may not subscribe to their sinister motivations but she at least is like somewhat happy here or thinks she's happy here or is like has a community here because then if she if something tips her off wait something might be wrong like i don't know somebody does sky riding over top of the cult that says you're in a cult get out or like somebody breaks in or a news a news van shows up and is like something happens that just is like a wake-up moment for her that makes her start to question things one piece at a time. It's going to be much more effective than if she just joins and then she's like, uh-oh, it's a cult. I got to go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, it, I didn't really want her to, like, just realize it right away. It, it mm -hmm. definitely, like, would be over time. And, like, maybe if she had some time to go off into the woods by herself to actually start thinking critically for herself, she can start. That can be part of her arc kind of thing, um, you know, developing her, her character and uh, becoming, a, like, a stronger-willed person kind of thing. Right, right, right. So this is going to be more like when ex whenever in whatever inciting incident um, snaps her out of her, um, you know, make, makes her, how are we going to phrase this? Something like uh, makes her question her devotion to the uh, community. 
and just be a little more specific with what's going on in this one episode. So when this incident makes her question her devotion, a you know die hard cultist or whatever, however you want to describe her. I'm, I'm get, she doesn't have to be like a raving mad cultist, but somebody who is at least deeply entrenched in this community um, must right. xxx goal um, before slash or else xxx stakes, and that might be something like uh, think of what does she have to kind of do in the pilot alone. So think of try to set up a situation in which she has to act. So maybe it's uh, that, you know, somebody breaks into the compound and she has to hide them and decide whether or not to give them away. Or maybe it's um, someone uh, gives her an opportunity to escape and she has to choose. Maybe somebody else escapes and she has to choose whether to report them or not. Like one of her friends gets out and is like, you got to leave this place. They're, they're not what you think they are. And they escape. And now she has to choose whether or not I have to turn in my own friend or not. Something like that. Just give her like a high stakes. Oh, yeah. Like choice to make perhaps within the pilot right and, and you could even throw in like aspects of plato's allegory or something like that um if it, you know someone coming back and be like oh they're just shadows kind of thing you know yeah yeah maybe the inciting incident is someone who escaped gets brought back and tells her what it's like outside something like that um someone who knows the outside world returns and tells her about it something like that i don't have an exact way to phrase this for you but hopefully that's is that getting your gears turning in the um yes in the right direction okay good yeah big time cool any big questions on this no thank you very much connor i appreciate it sure what's that there's one more there's a cult tv show i think it's on hulu is it called the path I haven't heard of that one. Uh, the uh, most of the ones that I had written down here were all movies. So I had like Sound of My Voice, uh, Mandy, Midsommar, right. uh, Jug Face, and The Empty Man. So um, at least one of your comps should be a TV show if you're doing a TV show. Um, yes, the, big time. The comps that you have are great, um, but try to pick something. At least one thing that we understand why is this going to be a whole show as opposed to a movie. The Path looks like the kind of thing you should check out. It's on Hulu. It stars Aaron Paul, um, and I'm pretty sure it's this kind of thing as well. I think the main character is like maybe uh a, even a leader of the cult or something like that not quite sure but yeah look into that one and maybe that'll be a good comp for you because that had three seasons awesome thank you um would you mind just going back to the the doc you were, um had up there i just want to f finish writing what uh the uh premise of the first episode sure wait which slide this one uh so, sorry it was it was the doc that you had with like uh the oh, oh um, right, right, right. This here? Yes, yes. Okay. I'm just I'm just on like the last sentence there. Oh no problem. So um, let me just share this uh, with everyone just so they can uh, script camp working premises, and um, you guys can that copy works and, too. Yeah, thank you. You can copy and paste from this if you need to. And I'll share that right there. So, um, and thank you, Nacho, just linked a great blacklist spec from a couple years ago about a married couple in a cult. Um, so, yeah, feel free. We're at the end of class, so feel free to take what you need from these, uh, the, what I've done today. You don't have to use anything that I've suggested, but um, these should hopefully put you on the right track. You should enroll if you've not already enrolled. So, scriptcamp.net slash membership. You can see some info here on what to do. If you want to sign up but have not yet done so and want to get immediate access to our chat, channels and video library just click the little green check mark emoji at the bottom of that post that nacho just put into the um chat there uh and uh thank you all for coming i hope that you guys learned some stuff from this and maybe are interested in joining the class we're going to be same next week same time doing the same kind of stuff um and i'm going to put up just a little more info about upcoming things at script camp so for next time your homework is to refine your series logline and pilot idea and to read a complete TV pilot, ideally something sort of related to your project, by May 15th, which is next week at the same date. Um, where do we find the video library? Uh, you can find that in this chat ch channel, I believe. So there you go, Trin. Um, and uh, so yeah, for next time, work on your log lines, get them down as much as possible, and make sure to pick your idea if you are still trying to juggle between several different ones. Um, and let's link the place where they can read pilots from... Is there, a, do we have a macro for that, Nacho? Oh, maybe not. Well, I think I've asked this before, I thought we did. 
But um, yeah, we'll link that in just a second. So just check this chat channel in a minute or so, and we'll have a great link for you to choose from many different uh, pilots. Let's look at what's coming up. Remember, yeah, next week is going to be week official week one concept and logline, and just fill out your sketch, like work on your sketchbook until then. Work on your logline. Week two, structure and broad strokes, scene cards, first act, second act, third act, finished by July third. What's next? We have Writer's Lab every Saturday, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. That's like office hours. You can come bring whatever questions you have or whatever topics you want to hear more about. We have Table Reads today uh, at 2 p.m. That's in one hour, isn't it? Um, so you can come by and uh, read some of your fellow students' uh, scripts. Go no ahead, table no table Reads today, oh, uh, Mother's Day. So uh, ne okay. it's uh, Sunday, and you can submit uh, feature or pilot or five-page uh, excerpt. Great. Okay. And we have... Classes Wednesday and Thursday, five to seven, on just general screenwriting topics. We have a brand new class on villain villain writing coming up on the eleventh, which should be awesome. Rewrite boot camp Saturdays, twelve to two. Feature boot camp uh, free class Friday, April twenty second, four to six. Wait a minute, we're past April at this point. Ignore those dates. But uh, feature boot camp is in, we just finished our third week, so in five weeks we'll have a new one starting. Pitch boot camp new session will start in June. Next TV pilot boot camp um, that's today, the free class uh, May eighth. So here's a bunch of the upcoming classes you can check out and if remember if you're a member you can go to all of these and all boot camps and everything we do here so sign up for unlimited and you can do all of this and uh remember script coins type in dollar sign store into any chat channel scriptcamp.net if you need to sign up and uh anything else referral program yep if you refer a friend they would a discount you will get a free month you can do that as many times as you want that'll wrap us up for today thank you all for coming by um make sure to write uh, you can send me a message on discord or write into one of our um chat channels like uh we have suggestion box or website questions if you need any more help um before next time um or you can email connor at scriptcamp.net and we can help you out so uh thanks for coming we'll see you at your next script camp class hope to see you soon thanks guys